Hello everyone, it's Marie from Skeletorama again. Welcome back to my channel, Kevin Ahashi Washington. It's been a minute, hasn't it? So, um, yeah, health problems, all kinds of fun stuff. But anyways, I'm going to try to start doing some more videos again. So one of the ways that I kind of try to get myself back into it when, you know, health issues, whatever, is, is making it hard for me to do any crafting stuff, is kits, right? So... I watch a lot of channels where they put together those dollhouse kits that you see on Amazon and everything. And um, the only problem with those is there's like music and they're not telling you anything and they don't show all the things. Um, and as you'll see here in a minute, sometimes that's essential. But um, I thought, you know, why don't I do a little series of videos? Um, just FYI, the Alice in Wonderland project I have done nothing to, so it's exactly the same way as I left it. So if you're wondering about that one, yes, I'll be getting back to that. But I just kind of have to kind of warm up a bit um, to get back into the swing of things. But so uh, I have a bunch of those kits laying around and I figured, you know, they're kind of the gateway drug <laughs> dollhouses, right? And that's how I got into it. I, I was watching them. They're just fascinating to watch people put these things together and... I looked on Amazon, they weren't too expensive, and I thought, you know, I'm gonna try one. I'll either like it or I'll, I'll hate it and wanna put my fist through a wall, and it was kind of both, actually. But uh, yeah, uh, as you know, I, I enjoyed it and then moved on, moved on. Um, the kind of cool thing about starting with those two is they're at a very small scale. So they're 124th, 148th, yeah, they're, they're all the way to, I think, 1 144th scale. So if you start with those, they're low risk. You don't have to have a bunch of special tools or anything. Um, and by the time you get to 112 scale, it's massive. So it's much easier to, to actually do, which is which is fun. So anyway, so what I'm talking about here are these sorts of things. Um, I have some examples to show you. Actually, I'll do that first. So we have the regular dollhouse kit. So this one here, oh, looks like the chair broke. Um, this is probably my favorite one that I ever did, just straight out of the box. Nice glare there, sorry about that. Um, this is, uh, it's like a tea garden sort of thing. And this has tons of like little things in there to make, little coffee and tea containers and desserts and all kinds of crap and just absolutely loved this. So this sort of thing, what scale is it? I have no idea, honestly, I think 148, but um, so we've got things like that. And most of them light up. Um, and then you have the little bitty ones like in the tins. I love these. These are just so ridiculous. Um, usually has a little thing you pull out here and come on, out you go. Seriously, they're super easy to turn the lights on. They're not. Oh, right, so it lights up and it's just super cute. Um, in the series, we are going to be doing one of these because I have a few of them. What scale is this? This is probably that one, 144th type scale. It's really, really tiny, 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 but it, it also teaches you a lot of cool things you can use to like um, sub for other things in a dollhouse. That's where I got a lot of ideas for stuff was doing these guys. We do have one subset of them, which are the Japanese kits. So these are, where's my instructions? It comes with a thing, it's the Billy dollhouse kits, right? And they have all sorts of stuff, little Japanese restaurants and um, houses, all sorts of things. Only drawback. Here's the instructions. For the one that I made today. So now this picture was taped up here, but I took it down so I could just keep it as a reference. But as you can see, the instructions are in kanji. Um, I, I may have been born and raised in Japan, but I do not, nor have I ever read kanji. Can you do this just using these instructions if you don't read Japanese? Probably not. Because, <laughs> yeah, no. It's it's really super, super difficult. There is a person, I will link him down below, who is just absolutely wonderful. It's HMS2. And he puts these together. So he's got a video of any of the ones you can get on Amazon. And they're really expensive, but um, he has videos and he does step to step. Um, he doesn't put like, he doesn't talk through it and he doesn't necessarily put measurements or anything. The measurements are in here. But I mean, even just figuring out 
what the hell these are, you know? It's like horrible, but watching his videos helped a lot. And so it looks like this. Ta-da! It looks like the picture. I didn't jack it up. Neat. But anyways, if I had not watched his video, I wouldn't have been able to do this, I don't think. So these are wonderful, but they, they are very advanced. Um, but they are put together really well. And then within the dollhouse things, once you kind of get, get going on them and stuff, you can also customize them. So here's probably my favorite one that I did. I'll turn the lights on for it. So I took this bookshop one and I made it Borders because I used to work for Borders. And uh, all of us who did are still very upset about it not being there anymore. <laughs> and we still wish we were there. But um, I'll come in and see how close I can get without the glare. There we go. So like if you look at those magazines, <clears throat> I even customize it down to the magazines. And I put stuff that I like, like crossword puzzles and dollhouse miniatures magazines, things like that. Um, I have on the door the Seattle's Best logo on the door. Um, the sign that came from some of my um, pictures. And if I turn it around here, as you can see, my wiring's crap because it keeps going in and out. Um, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a blade sign, a directional sign for history because pretty much everybody that worked at Borders, um, you kind of have your section that you did that you liked that you sort of specialized in. Here, let me take this off. Wow, that sounds great. Um, so everybody would have their own section they kind of specialized in, mine's history. So, I mean, even down to, there goes the battery pack. If you look on the back wall up here, can you see it? There we go, getting there. There is a poster of the Seattle's Best sign. It used to hang in the cafe. That exact poster um, mounted on wood used to hang in the cafe, and I know because it now hangs in my garage. So um, had to have that one in there. But yeah, I changed up some of the stuff. A lot of it I left the same. But, you know, you can definitely do what you want with these. Um, you're not stuck with just what the kit tells you to do. Okay, let's see. Let's turn these, these poor little flickering lights off. I made this quite a while ago. So it's, you can see this was before I, I learned how to um, put the, uh, any of the acetate pieces on and we'll talk about this too because that's a very common issue with it but all right so let me get this put away here for the love of god come on why is it this hard struggle struggle okay here we go close enough okay so what i'm gonna do in this video is i'm going to give you kind of some basic tips tricks tools etc so that you don't have to watch through a big long video to get all these. Um, I'm gonna give you everything I can think of ahead. And then of course I'll talk about it as I go through the kits in the next uh, few videos, but what kind of tools and things you're gonna need. Well, you need to start with a kit, right? So I have two, I have one more that's gonna be here on Tuesday. It's like a cafe. I love doing the cafes because they have a lot of little stuff like little cakes and crap, um, but it's cat themed. So I'm like, yeah, I need this. Um, so we have two different kinds. This is going to be one of those box theater ones. So this is the little teeny where it's got the tin and then you build it in the tin. So I got that one and I'll either do the cat cafe one or this is just like a regular cafe. This is kind of a small scale one. There are some fairly large ones. Let me, let me grab one of the large ones for you. Okay. See if I can even get this in the thing. You know, this one's pretty good size here. Um, and these sometimes are really funny because it's like the interior of a house and, and you just kind of get into the mind of the people who create these. And apparently pianos and telescopes are like way more important where these are made than, than they are here because uh, almost all of them have them. But I've seen them where they have one where it's like a kitchen and then just next to the kitchen is a bathroom and it's see-through. And I'm thinking, if I ever went into a house where they had a see-through bathroom next to the kitchen, I'm leaving 
because I don't need to be seeing that, especially if they invite you for dinner, right? Well, who the hell does that? But it's just some ridiculous floor plans in these, but they're kind of funny. Okay, I swear, sorry about that. <laughs> I'll edit out the sound of my ring hitting the glass mat and post. But, um, so the thing I remember with these kits is they're not all created equal. There's some crap ones floating out there. The other thing to know is you may find this kit with 20 different names on it. It's the same exact kit. Down to the fabric is exactly the same if it has fabric for like the bed covers or whatever. These guys, either there's one big place that designs these and then licenses them out to a bunch of smaller places, or everybody's just so busy ripping everybody off, but they're doing a really good job of it, that these will vary wildly in price as well. So let's say I went on Amazon, I want to get this kit. Um, First thing you want to know about it, like when you watch the videos on YouTube where people are putting it together and you go, God, I really like that house. Um, find out what the name of it is. It's always going to have a name. The name may or may not make any sense, but that's fine. <laughs> it's just, that's its name. So this one is called Baking Honey. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on there and as soon as I find a kit that I like, I'm going to look at its name, then I'm going to go up into the search and type in dollhouse kit and I'm going to put this name because the one that I have coming on Tuesday, it had probably four or five different ones, a couple different companies that made the kit um, and it ranged anywhere from $33 to $47 and it was either going to get here Tuesday or it was going to get here next month. So you really do want to kind of watch for that. Don't grab the first one you see, even if it's one you really like. Just pop that name in and do another search where it'll, it'll pull up all the ones with that name. And you can save quite a bit of money that way. <clears throat> with these ones, there are ones you do want. Because um, there's a couple companies that make these. The really nice ones are the ones where they've either got two rabbits, two cats, two bears, two something, you know, for their little kit. Um, and it's always going to have this thing here where it's got like this, you know, little poem thing, but it's just bizarre, right? And it always became part of them. Wherever, wherever they go, it becomes part of them. Cool. And um, these are the more well-built ones. The other ones are not very good. So just keep that in mind there. And this one, there's six of these, and then they do have another set, which I have some more of that did, they did six more of them. Um, okay, so we have our kit. Let's take a look at one of these, kind of get an idea. So they're all gonna come with, of course, the stuff, right? You have your instruction book, and it's gonna keep the stuff in little packages that's in your B package, your C package. I always take this and I have it sitting like right up here where I can see it so I can find the stuff. Right, and it's gonna have your instructions on how to do everything. And then with these ones, any of your stuff you have to cut out is gonna be in the back. So you're just gonna to have to remove that particular page to cut the stuff out. And if we open this bag here, see how you've got bag C, bag B. Leave them in the bag. Oh, for the love of God, leave them in the bag. Because what's going to happen is, especially when you get into those big rooms where you're doing a bunch of rooms of furniture, all of the little friends for one piece are going to be in the same bag. So this maybe makes four or five things. But if I go to pull the stuff to make the chair out of this bag, all of its pieces are going to be in there. So you really do want to kind of keep them grouped together. It, it really does you no good to, to take everything apart. Plus it keeps everything nice and contained. And on this one, you've got your little tin. And a lot of times you're going to have templates. Um, and I will get into how I deal with the templates here in a minute. But um, you'll have your little template separate, generally. With this, you don't want to cut every single template out, by the way. Because generally, it'll tell you. So this is going on the brown. It's wrinkled paper. It's gray paper. But it's going on the brown wrinkled paper. You're going to want to cut this whole thing out and stick it to that brown paper or to the white cloth or blue cotton print or red cloth. You don't wanna stick all this down in one thing and then you can cut it out as you go. But you don't wanna have all these little tiny pieces that are gonna get lost or mangled or whatever. And then these usually come with a little stand and it's real simple. You just go boom and it sits like that. Nothing to write home about there. All right, so 
let's see what the instructions for <clears throat> one of the full size kits look like. And of course, when we go to make each one, we will go over the kit in uh, much greater detail. Okay, so this one, this is a fairly small box here, but it's going to be organized the same way. So what you always want to look for is this. Those are your instructions. And sometimes it's also going to be the stuff that you're going to cut out. Okay, and see they do the same thing. Material A, B, C, D. It's kind of like with model cars. Um, one of the first model cars that I put together, I thought, oh, I'm going to save myself time and I would cut all the little pieces off of the plastic. Yeah, that was stupid. Um, I never did that again, by the way, after doing that. But um, same thing. You want to leave these kind of grouped in here because some of these are going to be very, very similar. Depending on the kit, sometimes this sheet will have these in actual size. And it is helpful to take if you've got, you know, a lot of things that are very, very similar. These are very, very similar in size. Well, you can lay it on it and make sure you got the right one. Or, where'd it go? I always keep my ruler, millimeters, centimeters, so you can do this because all your measurements are going to be in metric. Okay, so same thing. It's going to go through all of this. Um, this also includes the dust jacket. Always get the option with the dust jacket if you can because these things collect dust like crazy. Um, and then, of course, we've got the step-by-step -step instructions here. Okay, this one's really cool because it's got um, cakes, but you make them with felt. So that's why I figured I was going to do this one maybe to get kind of in the mood to do all the cake fails for the Alice project. And then it'll show you how to put the dust jacket. Now, eagle-eyed observers among you might notice how much this bears a resemblance to the borders one that I did. It's probably the same company. It's probably a variation on the same exact design. They almost always have a music box. I can't tell you how many music boxes I have in my box of leftovers for dollhouses because I just don't use them. Not really my thing. And then this right here is going to be all of the um, things that you'll cut out. So you got your acetate here. You've got all your pieces that you cut out. Again, leave these here until you need them because they have a number next to them. And it just really helps prevent um, things from getting messed up. Okay, now tools. Do you need specialized tools? Not really, but. <laughs> it's always not really, but. There are a few things that you need. Okay, so scissors. Any kind of scissors you want. I use Tim Holtz. Um, scissors made by Tonic because they uh, have micro serrations. So they kind of click, 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 um, and it helps you keep a grip and, and get a finer cut on things. If you're using these, those micro serrations, if you have the Tonic logo facing, let's say I'm cutting this and I want this as my finished edge, I'll get the micro serrations unless I turn the Tonic logo away. So just know that. I always say that every time I go to do stuff. So we need scissors, right? Because we're going to be cutting out a lot of stuff. You will need an X-Acto knife. Um, I usually have one that I have a number 11 blade, one I have a number six, which is the more hardcore one, just kind of depending on what I need to cut. And you will need glue. Do I have glue? Oh, I've got some glue, a little bit of glue. It was so funny. I have probably about 30 kinds of glue in my possession and my other half comes in one day and he asked me, do you have any glue? Do you seriously just ask me that just now? Do I have any glue? Yeah, yeah, I have all kinds of glue. So there are lots of different kinds of glue and they're used for lots of different things. So that's what we're gonna concentrate on for the bulk of this, just because it's helpful in other stuff with miniatures. But do I need all these? Yes, yes I do need all these different kinds of glue because they all do something different. So the main normal glue that most people use is gonna be your PVA glue. Um, a lot of people use tacky glue. I don't care for it. The water content's a little too high for me. I love my Scotch Create glue. This glue, I can take two pieces of cardboard, I can put this on there, hold it for a second, and let go, and it still stands up. I don't have to sit there and hold it forever. And so I put it in one of these, which is a bottle that you find where they keep all the paper quilling stuff. Um, and it's just a fine needle bottle. You can use the Sugar Bell icing bottles, whatever you want to use with it. But this gives me a really fine point so I can go along the edge of, you know, a piece of cardboard to stick to another piece of cardboard. So this is the bulk of what I'm going to use is the tacky glue here. 
I also use Gorilla Wood Glue. This stuff is so good. This is what all my dollhouses are put together with. My big, huge dollhouse is held together with this. It's very strong and it's very good and it does dry more or less clear. Um, so when I'm putting the wood pieces together, so like on this that I did today, these walls are held together with it. This is held onto its base with the wood glue, okay? Actually, we're gonna leave this here because we're gonna use this kind of as an example of where we would use this. So the PVA glue, wherever it went, that's where I'm gonna do just normal things like these packets. I'm gonna put these packets together with PVA glue. I'm gonna put this on here with PVA glue, okay? The next glue that is very useful for these is super glue. So I use Gorilla Super Glue Gel because I can put this on there. It's much easier to control where it goes. And you actually kind of have a second. Um, if you use the more liquid version of super glue, you don't generally have a second. It grabs very, very quick. Um, this stuff does not grab nearly as quick. It's more of a fast grab. Um, you can still, as you've seen me do plenty of times in other videos, stick yourself to things with this, but you can kind of have a minute to move with that. They also make this, which is uh, ultra control. And you kind of squeeze this and it does these tiny little beads. This is great, but I swear to God, they only put like a half a teaspoon of glue in this freaking thing because I can't even get through an entire one of these before this is out. So I don't know what's up with that, but this is essentially the same as this. Then we have glossy accents. If you want to glue acetate to things, this is what you want to use. You do not want to use super glue because it clouds acetate, so it's going to fog up on you. You can probably kind of see here where it's kind of foggy on my desk. This is the cap being set down on glass, so that's what it does. So it does the same thing to your um, stuff, and that's what happened with the roof of the, the borders one. This over here. So if you look in here and you can kind of see those hazy marks, that's what that is. What I should have used was this. This dries very clear. Um, it's not gonna grab quickly, right? So if you're like in a big hurry, well, you shouldn't be building a damn little house if you're in a big hurry, but um, if you're in a big hurry and you want it to grab quick, this is not gonna grab terribly quick, but it's very, very strong and it's very, very clear. Okay, we also have E6000. So this is what I use when I wanna do metal to metal. Um, you can use it for other things. Um, I'll use it sometimes if I'm using masonite or whatever. Um, I'll use this maybe in place of the wood glue to do the building sound because this is going to be very, very secure. It also does not grab very quickly. It takes a minute to set up, but once it does, it's very, very secure. What it's really good at gluing together is the tube and the cap. And I don't use it fast enough, so I don't ever buy the big bottles anymore. They have these little individual bottles and they are perfect because I can get a lot of use out of them. But if I glue the cap to the bottle, I can chuck it. I have three more, it's not a big deal. So that's great stuff. Okay, this stuff is used for um, patterns and things, okay? So it's Tombow Mono Multi Liquid Glue. So if I take this and I got two pieces of paper, I put it on here, smoosh them together, it sticks, it's a permanent glue. However, if I take the piece of paper, I put this on there and I let it air dry, it becomes sticky and works as a temporary adhesive. So this is what I put on the back of the patterns. Let's see, where's my... Let's grab one of these, see if we've got any templates in here. Let's pretend this is a template, right? I'll put that on here, let it air dry, and then I can stick that to the fabric, acetate. I can stick it to paper, I can stick it to most things, and it'll come right off like a post-it note. So that's how I get those things on there. I just make sure that this is running underneath everything. I'll put it on like a squiggle and I hold it up to the light to make sure that I've gotten at least, you know, each piece that I have to cut out once with this. So that way when I put it down, if I cut it out, it's not, everything else isn't gonna fall off because that was the only thing holding it on. That makes sense, okay? So we got this one. We also have score tape. So I usually keep half inch, quarter inch, eighth inch. This is really good for things like sticking two pieces of foam together, or you can use it to put um, this stuff here on to the foam board or whatnot. Um, this is super duper duper useful with textiles in those little teeny houses. So when you're doing the bed for the little things here, so anywhere you see textiles here, so that chair, 
I use double sided tape because I can, I'm can. i working really tiny, I can just put that on there and it holds it really well. It's nice and flat, doesn't add bulk, doesn't soak through, none of that stuff. Next on our multi-glue tour is this. So Beacon 3-in-1, you can use Fabrifix, Fabri-Tac, <clears throat> doesn't matter, these are acetone-based glues, okay? So your PVA is water-based, acetone-based especially when you are dealing with these. So if you watch those people put these things together, what you'll notice a lot of times is they get these bubbles and warps and it looks like crap, right? And I'm thinking like the one I was watching, I've been watching this guy for years and he still put stuff together, you know, where he had the floor. Sometimes they'll have grooves to put your wiring in. You can tell he used PVA glue and smoothed it down too much and has this huge kind of ditch now going through there. That's because that PVA glue makes that paper wet and then it, it's either going to buckle or whatever on you or it'll go into divots that you don't want it to, right? This will not do that. So I use this. This is actually what I use in dollhouses to hold the wallpaper up and it works beautifully because again, it's not water-based. So it's not going to warp. It's not going to bubble. It's not going to do anything weird on you. Same with this. So this is brilliant for this sort of stuff. And then I think our final glue, I'm sure I'll come across more, is this. Okay, so now if we look at the case for this one again. Okay, this dust jacket. You see this here? I didn't quite know how to put these together yet. So I was using, I think I was trying with E6000 something. I don't know what the hell we use, but it didn't work. This is perfect for putting those dust jackets together. Anytime you want plastic to plastic, it's this. This actually works with capillary action, so I'll have those things edge to edge, and I just take this and touch it at the top, and you can watch it go whoosh, all the way down. Even if you do get some dripping down it, it's completely clear when it dries. It's perfect. It was six bucks at Hobby Lobby. It's not bad. But this stuff works really, really great, especially for those dust jackets. It was a massive game changer. But, you know, if you have two pieces of plastic you want to put together, this stuff works good. Okay, so that's glue. <laughs> Let me clean some of this stuff up and get some more room here. Oh, almost forgot glue sticks. So not all glue sticks are created the same. Normally I despise glue sticks, but Scotch Create, again, this is a really strong glue stick. This will work also for putting, you know, the wallpaper or the flooring stuff on the dollhouse kits because it's just a piece of paper. But again, this is still a water-based glue, so it can still pucker on you. So just, just use that. <clears throat> okay, that's a little bit better. So along with the glue um, and all those different things, I do have some kind of more specialized... Well, this isn't super specialized. Everybody's got sandpaper, right? So I get the blocks of the sandpaper, and then when the stuff on the original block dies, I take... Fabri-Tac or 3-in-1, and I just glue sandpaper to it. It works brilliantly. So these last forever, but these are really, really good, um, useful tools, especially for doing those walls. So like with this, bring this over here. So this is a piece of paper that's on here. So when I put it on, it was overhanging a little at the top. Instead of trying to cut that, you just sand it, and it gives you the cleanest edge you can get. An unusual tool I also used, if you're looking at this, is archival ink and an ink blender because when you cut this paper you get those white edges and it looks kind of crappy so whenever I have those white edges I just hit it with that and it hides them so they're not standing out real bad that's just a personal preference thing though. okay so along with sanding blocks we have things like one two three blocks so these are brilliant for giving you a nice you know right angle to something. So if I am gluing this to this because reasons, right? I can sit that there and walk away and let it dry and I know it's going to keep that nice angle for me. It's also good for weighing things down um, so that they dry flat. Like if you do any of Ara's kits um, that she does, a lot of her mat board kits, she'll have you put two layers of it together to get a double thickness. And so I'll sandwich them and I'll sit these on top of it. And then, of course, I usually keep 
a little dish so I can put a little small stuff in there, especially when you're doing these kits because you have all these teeny things. So you'll make like all the little teeny furniture steps. And instead of having it just sitting out where I'm gonna flick one off into space, um, I did do the, um, oh, which one was it? The Hoosier cabinet, Ava's Hoosier cabinet kit. And <laughs> when I was cutting my drawer pulls, which are straight pins with little circles glued on top of them, one of them is still MIA because I snipped it and I wasn't expecting the top to fly off, but it did and I have no idea where it is. So that sucked. But um, anyways, you don't want to have all these little bits so you can just kind of keep them in here once they're put together. Same goes for even the larger rooms. I'll just, I have a larger fish <laughs> that's about yay big, you know, or I've got any number of, you know, this sort of thing, any little containers to keep little small stuff in. Another specialized, and this is a specialized tool, but this is a game changer as well, are these. So these are blend, bleh, bending pliers, bending pliers. So these are designed to help you bend paper. Okay, so let's take this and let's pretend this is, you know, some square, I'm gonna make a box out of it, right? This allows you to hold it here and give yourself a nice straight edge when you fold. Um, these, I ordered mine, they literally came from Japan. I think that's um, really the only place you can get them. I think it's Tamiya, because it's got the same, same logo on it, I can't remember, but yeah, these are fantastic, especially if you do like the bookstore thing where I did all those books, I have to bend all of those. So these are really, really valuable to have with you. And then of course you got stuff like, you got your wire cutters, and you got your pliers. Um, those sorts of things come in really, really handy, especially any wire that they give you in those kits. Don't try to, to cut it um, without using actual wire cutters. It'll destroy your scissors. I do have one more tool that seems to have wandered away, and those are my wire strippers, um, because most of these kits come with LEDs. And so um, you will have to strip wire at some point with some. So I see this here. Now this one has them kind of off for you. Usually they don't. So you're gonna have to cut the wire and you're gonna have to strip it and the wire strippers really do help quite a bit. Okay, so one thing that I did do was I found the wire strippers. So these are them. And so you just use them to grab wire and it pulls the sheath off the wire so that you can then twist the wires in. Um, but I almost forgot an incredibly important one which is in here. And that is tweezers. <laughs> so you need lots and lots of tweezers. You got the little fine tweezers. So you see right here, see all the super glue and stuff that's built up on those. So every time I go to do a new kit I'll take these and I'll soak them in acetone for a bit just to clean them off. Um, because they do get a bit messy, but this kit is brilliant and there's two more that are over there, but um, It was like seven dollars on Amazon. So one of these days I'll get around to doing one of those Amazon store link business and I'll eventually link it, but um, yeah, so tweezers are very 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 important part of any dollhouse kit Okay, I think that is all of the things Yes fairly sure. So what the plan is going to be again is um, I'm going to go through and I'm going to make a couple of these kits and this one so you can see it. So it's either going to be the bakery one or one of the small tins and then I will make the other one. Um, I'm going to wait to release this video until I've done at least one of these so that I don't put this video out and then it's another year <laughs> before I put something else out. Um, and then hopefully these will get me kind of back in the mood to doing things and I can get to back to work on the Alice project. And I have an addition, one of the two um, floor, two room additions coming for my Allison Jr. Um, dollhouse. So the Mad Scientist house is about to get two more rooms, which is gonna be cool. Um, so that one, I can maybe film that as well, which would be cool. 
and I do have one of the um, Painted Lady dollhouse kits, the big real good toys one um, that I haven't even started putting together. I would love to do that and film that because I have looked and looked and looked for a long time and you see people start to do it. They're like, I'm gonna film myself putting this together from beginning to end. And then like three episodes in, you never hear from them again. I kind of don't blame them, but yeah. So um, that may be coming down the road at some point too. So yeah, that is it for this one. And so I will see you in one of these two, hopefully very, very soon and take care. Hey, Bye.